people transportation at the organization's annual conference. First, we have Carrie Sanderford, a, ride, a routing coordinator with the district. Uh, she received the South Carolina Association for Pupil Transportation's Humanitarian of the Year Award. The award is given to individuals who make a positive and dramatic impact on the pupil transportation system as well as the communities he or she serves. Cheryl Harnish, the district's transportation administrative assistant, nominated Ms. Sanderford for the award. Describing her, Ms. Harnish said, Carrie is the definition of a true humanitarian. Her impact on the happiness and welfare of those she comes in contact with is tremendous. On career day, Carrie inspired students to write notes of appreciation, thanking their bus drivers. She implemented a plan and coordinated with our child nutrition department to provide snacks and meals to our McKinney Vento students on the bus due to the length of time they ride. Taking it a step further, she makes sure that they have meals to take home on the weekends in some cases. Carrie also makes Not only does Ms. Sanderford take care of the students in our district, she also takes care of the employees. Harnage said, Carrie takes it upon herself to send random motivational emails to staff. She also takes cookies to our state bus shop mechanics and staff as a way to improve morale and show the district's appreciation. It's very clear why Ms. Sanderford received the Humanitarian of the Year Award. She's selfless and dedicated to the students and employees of our district. At this time, would Ms. Sanderford please come forward to receive her certificate? Next, we'd like to recognize Ms. Liza Jamerson, bus driver in the Berkeley Transportation Office. Ms. Jamerson received the South Carolina Association for Pupil Transportation's Hero Award at this year's conference. The award is given to an individual who has performed a heroic act associated with any aspect of the South Carolina public schools transportation system. So what was her heroic act? Well. On April 21st, Ms. Jamerson uh, was asked to drive a middle and high school route that she'd never driven before. Uh, she, dr she was dropping off the middle school students when she heard a loud noise. She went to the student who made the noise and asked him some questions. Immediately, she realized that he was having trouble breathing and experiencing severe chest pains. Ms. Jamerson quickly called EMS. The student was evaluated by EMS and then transported to the local emergency room where he was diagnosed with a partially deflated right lung. The student later was transported to the MUSC Children's Hospital where he underwent surgery to resect a small portion of that lung. He was in the hospital for uh, six days. Ms. Harnage, who also nominated Ms. Jamerson, said, Ms. Jamerson is a hero in our eyes and in the eyes of this student's parents. His mother wrote an email to the district staff and said, I want to make sure that you and Ms. Jamerson know how much we appreciate her quick response and care of our son. If she had not taken his complaint seriously, his condition may have worsened. Ms. Jamerson's act speaks for itself. She's a hero, and we are honored to say that she's a part of the Berkeley County School District family. Ms. Jamerson, would you please come forward to receive your certificate?
that concludes our special recognitions for this evening, but I would like to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to come out and be with us this Saturday for the One Berkeley Goes Back to School Festival. It's from 9 to 1 uh, at the Monk's Corner Regional Recreation Complex just down the road. That's 418 East Main Street. Um, so be there. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have uh, pet bands. Um, athletes, we're going to have photo booths, and of course the book bags stuffed with school supplies. So please come out and be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three, which is our citizens' comments. And again, in order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that, uh, that you honor the following guidelines. The stakeholder comments are welcome and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be regarding uh, complaints against or programs, policies, or, or procedures. Comments regarding complaints against employees other than district level executives or references to students other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should elect select one speaker to maximize uh, participation uh, we had limit each of our um, people to three minutes per speaker and the board does reserve the right to allot additional time or halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines our first speaker this evening is mr terry hardesey and he wants to speak on transparency Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Blackburn. Um, I see the technology. I've been on the website, and I'm uh, am impressed with being able to find more information that I haven't been able to find before. I see you're videoing, so I'm, I'm sure the videos will be back on the website soon. They're not there right now. So I, I encourage you and commend you for, for that. There is one item on the agenda, though, that kind of uh, strikes... Uh, a little bit of trepidation in me and that's uh, your board chair report because it comes after your executive session and I imagine there's some very valid reason for it but it looks like you're just trying to hide it from the public so I would encourage you to have your board chairman report during the regular business section thank you Our next speaker will be Miss uh, Patricia Hanlon Exine, Tanner Foster Creek Area Elementary School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 23 years of my career was spent in public education and as a community liaison officer between our Board of Education, our administration, and our citizens of about 100,000 people. I took every opportunity to accept every invitation from any community group to attend their meetings or to bring representatives to them. Two-way communication. You can't have a discussion about something the board is going to vote on here because you're limited to three minutes and your board will not respond. So we have invited you to a community meeting that the Hanahan Citizens Committee is having next Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. at the Shield of Faith Church in the sanctuary next Thursday at 6.30. We will provide the information that we have about the roundabout, the hazardous intersection, the turn lanes, what we know to this point. We've invited you all in the administration and we hope that, that you will attend. But um, I, I am so disappointed in you all. You are making decisions without having all the information. I think a lot of your hearts are in the right places, but you're not looking at the overall picture of what is unique about each school. You are opening schools that are gonna be well below capacity, and yet you are opening a school, hopefully in Tanner, I see the deadline is now August instead of May, um, that will be at 90 or near 90% capacity. And yet other schools are opening at below capacity that are having all of their needs met. Our traffic congestion is now. 
It's not at Fox Bank now. It's not at Nexton now. It's not at Philip Simmons. It's at our school now. And that is our need. And we hope that you will address it. Thank you. I say something. I know I'm going to get some tomatoes thrown at me um, for this. You know, I'm in, definitely in support of the Tanner Foster Creek School and think it needed to be built years ago. But I think we said with this board for a long time that we're not in the road building business. Um, you know, we'll do what we can to get the roads to the school, but I think we need to first be focused on getting the school built first and then worry about the roads later. But the roads are a county or a state issue, in my opinion. Thanks. Our next speaker, Mr. Bill Healy. The egress for the new Hanahan Elementary School. Before I begin, by the way, state law says it is your responsibility for the schools. Just to, let's clear that one up. But thank you. Superintendent, board members, administration, residents of Berkeley County. Here we go again. Let's first start with the connection to North Rett, Henry, ba Henry Brown Boulevard from the new school. This at one point was a very critical issue. You were ready to buy property in that area just to have egress out. This was recommend recommended from board members as well as prior superintendents along with your consultants and architecture group. What happened? I guess we're just back to flip-flop mode, which is normal for some members of this board. Some of you have perfected the bait-and-switch game. Tell the public one thing, then go and do the opposite. Some of you have specialized in half-truths, which in my opinion is nothing more than a lie to deceive the residents of Berkeley County. Kind of like your search for a superintendent. The first three were greater than apple pie. Just ask Dr. Murray. That's what he said. Now they were unacceptable. Did you ever tell us why? But I just have to accept your earnest desire to defraud and show lack of transparency to the citizens of Hanahan and Berkeley County. The main reason I'm here is the intersection of Williams and Foster Creek, but I need to ask you all a very personal question. I would ask everyone in the room to see how they would reply. Would you ever intentionally put a loved one in harm's way if you didn't have to? Would you? If you did, that would be such a sickening and repulsive thought, but yet you want to do it to the offices of Hanahan and Berkeley County. Why, after seeing what happened in Sangre, would you just go ahead and want to take the cheap way out? Maybe you need to talk to your fellow board member, Mr. Mac McQuillan, or Senator Larry Grooms, about their fun playing with cars on Daniel Island. Can some of you be that heartless or callous, or are you just so determined to undermine Hanahan? Money's not the issue. You were willing to spend more for the Bowen site, which, by the way, included a turnabout. Maybe we should talk about the golf cart you just bought for $13,000 a piece. Can't wait to get the FOIA request back on that one. Also, you should be aware that SCDOT stated that they will not give you approval for turn lanes unless you get long-term commitment from a law enforcement agency for an officer at that site. Did you also know that both Hanahan and Berkeley has turned down your request for those officers? What's next? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? It's time for this nonsense and delays to stop and stop now. Start doing your jobs as public servants. I challenge you to meet with the residents of Berkeley County and get this resolved right away before you cost us more of our precious dollars. Right now, commit to coming to the meetings the Citizen Committee has set up on August 18th. Make the effort to listen and work with the citizens as you promised in your press release in April. Or were those just words without meaning or morals? Listen to the people paying your salaries instead of just amusing yourselves. Where is the promise you have made? Does your word not mean anything? For some of you, the meaning of commitment or integrity is just a buzzword for paper. It's time you start working for all the constituents of Berkeley County. It's time this issue is closed and a much needed school is put in place. The school will be 90% capacity at opening, so what are you waiting for? Let's do it again. If you're in favor, stand up and show that you will attend this important meeting. You keep saying that time is of the essence. Time to prove your words. Talk is cheap. Thank you. Oh, one last thing I have to ask the chairman. The Citizens Committee was contacted by Mrs. Schwabe for all our names and addresses. I was wondering if that was sanctioned by the board for her to go out and do that. Because we did request a reason why that was done, and we have not received the reason back. So was the board sanctioning her to get all our names and addresses? Because we did provide that once before. Was it to invite us, you know, back because you missed us to dinner? 
but to try to intimidate us. I would love to know an answer on why we were contacted. Because I'll tell you something, I'm from up north, a little town called Brooklyn, New York. We don't get intimidated very often up there, but we do get more determined to get the right answers. Do I have permission to Yes, respond? you may answer. Um, I, I don't remember getting a request of why I asked. I have yet to speak to a resident in Tanner Plantation who knows what your committee is doing and why. I was simply trying to figure out who makes up this committee and my fault. This It's taken me this long to ask. We would ask so, you to have come to the August 18th meeting and we would introduce you to many. It would be our pleasure. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's the same church that you went to when we had the original meeting back a couple of years ago. I didn't attend that meeting, and I won't be attending I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this one I'm because I, the negotiations are not the responsibility of this board, and I will not participate in those. That's what the district is to do with our superintendent. Well, that concludes our citizens' comments. Moving on to agenda item number four, administration and facilities. <clears throat> Mr. Jackson? Can everyone see? Uh, can't read the street signs, but all right. Good evening, Chairman Hayes, Superintendent Blackburn, members of the board. Tonight, I present to you the proposed attendance lines for Goose Creek Primary and Sedgefield Intermediate. <coughs> As a reminder, this change is necessary due to the opening of the previously mentioned Tanner uh, Elementary School in the Tanner Foster Creek area, which will open in 2018. It also provides an opportunity to maximize the capacity for each school and help provide a more feasible long-term solution for the growth that's occurring in Goose Creek. The adjustment to the attendance lines is part of the district strategic plan to address overcrowding. Um, as part of the plan, both Goose Creek Primary and Sedgefield Intermediate will be reconfigured to establish two kindergarten, two schools to serve kindergarten through fifth grade. A version of these attendance lines were originally drafted in 2013. Since that time, attendance lines were also on display at public meetings held at Goose Creek Primary and Sedgefield Intermediate. The most recent meetings were held on July 19th and July 21st of the current year. Uh, the proposed attendance lines have also been posted on the district's website for public viewing. Uh, you will note the established attendance lines or proposed attendance lines use both natural boundaries uh, such as tree line buffers as well as man-made boundaries such as Red Bank Road and How Hall Road to establish the attendance zones. So far, the feedback that we've received been, has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, the administration of both schools have reviewed the attendance lines and agree with the proposed boundaries. Uh, so tonight, the administration asked for the board's approval for first reading of the proposed attendance lines. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the administration's recommendation to adopt the proposed attendance lines for Goose Creek Primary and Sedgefield Intermediate Schools as presented by Mr. Jackson for first reading with the recommended change to take effect in the fall of 2018 upon completion and opening of the new elementary school in Tanner Foster Creek area. Second. All right, we have a motion to accept the administration's recommendation to adopt the proposed attendance lines for Goose Creek Primary and Sedgefield Intermediate Schools as presented by Mr. Jackson. And this is the first reading. It's recommended changes to take effect in the fall of 2018. Do we have a, any discussion of these? I would just like to say personally, I prefer uh, intermediate schools and elementary schools. Um, we have a lot of community schools, and pe and a lot of people do prefer uh, to raise their children in common cohorts. Uh, if you're telling me the community here hasn't asked for that, that would be Sally Walford's personal preference and the preference of the areas that I represent. But if these areas are OK um, with letting that go and letting that community feeling go, then I support you. But my preference is to keep as many grades and, and common cohorts as we can in community schools. Um, but if we have recently gotten feedback and they're still supporting us. 
Yes, ma'am. We we have gotten that feedback. Um, as far as the comment cards, I do have those available. I can forward those to the superintendent. She can pass that along to the board. Any other discussion? All right, then at this time, all of those in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Crystal Queen to the podium to present the quarterly construction update. Um, good evening, Superintendent Blackburn, Chairman Hayes, and members of the board. Um, I'd like to just say a brief um, thing about um, our interim director of facilities, um, Mr. Gene Sides. He couldn't be here tonight, so I'd like for you all to just keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Um, he's having some medical issues right now, so if you could just keep him in your thoughts. Um, so we'll move forward um, and get started. Okay, so on the screen, you'll see our major project schedules that we have remaining. Um, currently, at the top of the schedule, you'll see Goose Creek High School. Uh, we are actually wrapping up the fifth and final phase of this project. Um, you'll see at the top, we're in uh, one-year warranty phases in certain areas of this school. Um, so the cafeteria is one of those, and actually the newest wing that we opened in February, which would be on the Garwood Street, um, that wing is also in, in the warranty phase. So right now we are currently finishing up the bus loop and the new teacher parking lot and new bus canopies there. Um, Philip Simmons Elementary Middle, that school is gonna be open for business next week, so that's another major milestone for us. Um, Phillips Simmons High School um, is still on track and scheduled to open in August of 2017. Um, Tanner Plantation uh, Elementary School, we are currently in the wetland permit stages. You can see right here we are uh, waiting on our permit for that. We're also currently working on early site design and also building design. So we have a lot going on right now with our team and we are still on target. Um, I would like to mention um, uh, to Ms. Pat's comment, we are actually still on target to open um, the project in May. Obviously the school will not be open for business until August. So we're still on that time frame. We're gonna uh, have substantial completion in May. Um, Fox Bank Elementary, we are kind of on the same schedule right now. They're in the permit stages. Also early design stages, uh, we're gonna bid that out this November and hopefully start construction January, February. Um, just a milestone that I'd like to mention, um, and I'm not sure if we have presented this information to the board quite yet, but we did have a project savings of over $300,000 on this project by the time we closed it out. So I'd just like to share that with you. And the elementary school has been officially open for a year now. We're going to be opening up again for our second year. So um, I spoke with the principal, and she shared some of these photos of kids actually using the facility. So it's, it's actually fun for us to see this um, live and happening. Okay, um, Tanner at Foster Creek Area Elementary School. We have a lot going on with this project right now. We have, as a team, review, reviewed our first cost estimate, which is in the schematic design phase. Um, so the design team met today and we're reviewing pricing right now. Uh, we have some revisions to that and then we'll have a finalized estimate probably in two weeks. Um, design development drawings, which are the next phase of our design construction drawings, um, they're in progress, and we expect to have those to our team uh, for review next week. Um, as I mentioned, the nationwide permit is under review, which is a good sign. We've had contact by the Army Corps, so they are um, actually looking at the site and are verifying the site right now. And the early site package um, is in progress too and we hope to bid that out in the fall. 
Goose Creek High School, as I mentioned, this is um, finishing out um, next week, actually, or I'm sorry, the end of this week. Um, I kind of like to show you, again, I mentioned that this is the fifth and final phase. Um, there used to be some buildings here, and now they are occup being occupied by a parking lot. Um, new bus canopies and uh, canopies in the front. We actually demolished some buildings in the back to open up a courtyard and um, took down an old 300 wing. So the site looks a lot different. It's cleaned up a lot, um, and it, it's starting to shape up and look really nice. Um, you'll see um, some of these pictures um, they're it's looking a lot different there now um, since we have to submit this a little early um, a lot has happened in a week but um, the end of this week we will be wrapping up striping uh, parking lot signage so the project is really getting close crystal do y'all expect any <coughs> outstanding items to start school um, or do you think all the bus loop and safety items and all that stuff will be finished. Yes, it will be complete by the end of this week. Yeah, we're on track. Okay, um, moving on to Philip Simmons High School. Um, just a general layout of the project. Academy buildings at the top, the auditorium, administration area, cafeteria, kitchen, gym, locker rooms, and then the ninth grade academy. Okay, so a lot is happening here. Um, brick, brick veneer is being installed. Um, you'll see a lot of metal decking that is in preparation for the roof system. Um, a lot of steel going on, lots of masonry. Um, site utilities for storm drains, water, and sewer are being installed right now. Okay, and you can see this is the decking that I was referring to over the cafeteria. Um, this is the gym area, which is getting ready for brick veneer. And then here's the start of the administration and main corridor there. Okay, Fox Bank Elementary, as I mentioned, um, we are also in the same phase, similar to Tanner. Um, we have received our jurisdictional delineation, which is just information back and letter back from the core uh, verifying wetlands that we have on site. Um, there was a stakeholder meeting held in July. The architects presented conceptual floor plans and elevations, and they are working on some revisions there. And then the coordination with Monk's Corner Fire Station and the layout of their property is being coordinated right now. Okay. Since May, um, when the board gave us approval to move forward with stabilization, um, our team has been very hard at work. We have been working on asbestos surveys. Um, we've had a project kickoff meeting with the design team. Um, so all members have been there to field verify specific items. We are actually working on getting a contractor on board so we can stabilize the building. Um, that solicitation was sent out in July, and then we hope to interview later this month. Um, so. Currently, our stabilization design is scheduled to be completed in the end of September. And we kind of want to highlight Philip Simmons Elementary Middle since that school will be opening next week. Um, and this photo is a little bit dated. As you guys know, a lot can happen in several weeks. But um, just to kind of lay out the land again, here's your main corridor. The um, kitchen, cafeteria, multi-purpose rooms over on the side is the middle school, and then the other side is the elementary school. So excellent progress. Um, the building is finishing out. OSF inspections have occurred. We received occupancy, parking lot access, um, building entry, bus loops, all those things are complete. Um, everything is starting to get cleaned up. We're wrapping things up. Teachers have moved in. Um, go back. Um, we are getting ready for a ribbon cutting ceremony on Sunday. Um, so everything is really starting to come together. These are just a few photos of classroom spaces, band room spaces, the gymnasium, reception area. 
some more classrooms, multi-purpose rooms, <coughs> middle school classrooms. And again, we have two entries, so you'll see the elementary school in entry and then the middle school entry. And then this is our logo for the elementary school and the terrazzo flooring. Any questions? Good job. Okay, thank you. All right, then moving on to agenda item five, financial services. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Ms. Blackburn, you have before you two bids. Um, bid 478 for band instruments. This was the result of um, opening of schools. So we'll use this bid to open um, to, for Philip Simmons, uh, middle and high. And also some schools are going through some recycling of band instruments and using special funds to um, get some newer instruments into their program. We ask for you to approve bid 478 to um, Lot one for brass, lot four for woodwind to uh, Washington Music Sales for an estimated award amount of $352,670. And lot two for percussion, lot three strings, and lot five electronics to Pecknell Music for an estimated award amount of $62,965. I ask for your approval. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve bid 478. 1516 as presented by Mr. Thomas to Washington Music Sales Center Incorporated for lot one bass, uh, br excuse me, brass, and lot <laughs> four woodwind instruments for an amount of $352,670 and to Pecknell Music for lot two percussion and lot three strings and lot five electronics for an award amount of $62,965. Second. Right, we have a motion to approve the bid 478 as presented by Mr. Thomas to the Washington Music Sales Center Incorporated for a lot number one brass and lot number four woodwind instruments for an award amount of $352,670 and to Pecknell Music Company Incorporated for a lot number two percussion, lot number three strings and lot number five electronics for an award amount of sixty two thousand nine hundred sixty five it has been seconded is there any discussion of this all right then all of those in favor of this motion please respond by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed same sign okay mr thomas mr chair next bid is um uh, 480 for texas instrument calculators and this is a bid that's um has come up for renewal for next year, and this is going to be an as-needed basis um, for schools to use for um, uh, electronic calculators. Uh, we'd like to award that to Tech Mark Computer Products um, for an up-to cost of fourteen thousand two hundred twenty dollars and three cents, depending on how they want to pay, whether it's P card or check. So, <laughs> ask for your award of that. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve motion and bid number 480 for the 2015-2016 school years to Techmark Computer Products in the amount of $14,220.03 for the use of Texas Instrument Calculators as the school's desire. Second. I right, have the motion to accept the, uh, the, approve the bid 480 as presented by Mr. Thomas to Techmark Computer Products for Texas Instrument Calculators for an amount up to $14,220.03. It's been seconded. Do we have any discussion on this? Then all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, Mr. Thomas. Okay, moving on to human resources. <coughs> Ms. Levine, Dr. Levine. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Hayes, members of the board, Superintendent Blackburn. At the July 26, 
2016 school board meeting, you approved the first reading of policy IHA and the corresponding rule. It is the recommendation of the administration at this time that you approve the second and final reading of policy and rule IHA-R grading assessment systems for revision as presented in agenda item 6A. All right, do I have a motion? You do, Mr. Chair. I make a motion to approve the second and final reading of policy IHA and rule IHAR grading assessment systems for revision. Second. All right, the, the motion has been made to approve the second and final reading of the policy IHA and rule IHAR grading assessment systems for revision. It's been seconded. Is there any discussion of this rule? Then all those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. okay, thank you. Policy BCAB is being presented to you with revisions noted in the draft of the policy you received. It is the recommendation of the administration that you approve the first reading of policy BCAB board meetings for revisions as presented in agenda item 6B. Do I have a motion? Chairman, I make a motion to approve the first reading of policy BCAB, board meeting for revision. Second. Second. I defer. All right, we have the motion to approve the first reading of the policy change for BCAB, board meetings for revision. It's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I just want to say thanks, Reverend Wright, for making this motion. This is the motion for those of you that don't, don't know what or, or, excuse me <laughs> Reverend Wright too no <laughs> no Re this this is an important motion in my mind and I appreciate everyone's hard work on working through this policy in light of the threats we've gotten from these Washington this Washington DC group and I I think that it took courage for us to to do this motion I'm proud of you and I appreciate you for making it I'd like to say I think this is a good move as you know we are Americans aren't we yes and um, looking back on where our nation began we cannot cannot as a nation forget that we have a God and all that we do we have to acknowledge him and when we begin to forget and we look at what's going on around us in our nation we wonder why it's because we have separated ourselves. Let's continue to do the right thing. And that is to, there's nothing wrong with public prayer if we do it according to the law. Thank you. I agree and I thank you. I was not here at the last meeting so I didn't get to participate in the discussion but this was very important to me. I know it took time and effort um, for the leadership of the board and for others to write this and bring it um, in front of the full board and I appreciate your work to get this done. We make hard decisions as a board. We really do and we make controversial decisions but this is this is the one thing I think that we all recognize. These, this is an important meeting and this solemnizes the meeting for us. It, it shows that as a board we recognize this is important business we're doing for our children and teachers and I, I encourage every member to vote for it if they so choose. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, all of those in favor of the first reading of the policy BCAB, the board meetings for revision, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we have some information regarding the profile of a Berkeley County School District educator. We know we've always talked about what we expect of graduates in South Carolina and students in South Carolina, but we also want to share some information with you that we've looked at that we feel is very important for our educators in Berkeley County School District. So at this time, I ask Dr. Kim McLaren to come to the podium. Good evening, Chairman Hayes, Superintendent Blackburn, and members of the board. I'm also going to be joined by our teacher forum representative, Sharon Blackwood, tonight. And we are so excited to be presenting this to you. Um, give me just a second.
last spring you all had a few workshops and at one of those workshops Ms. Schwabe we were talking about the profile of a South Carolina graduate and your comment was you know we ought to have a profile of a Berkeley County educator that would just make sense we listened and after listening to you, we went back and Dr. Murray's interns helped us tremendously and we started working on coming up with what that profile might look like. What do we want our educators to be able to do and to be masters of as they help our children? And it came down to a lot of skills that were very similar from what we want of our students when they become graduates. We want them to be leaders. We want them to have strong world-class skills and professional characteristics. The big difference is the centerpiece, world-class knowledge, and what that wheel looks like when you come to talk specifically about educators. We listened an awful lot as we developed this. It wasn't developed in-house. It was vented through all of our directors and our coordinators. We've taken it to the teacher forum and to the principals. We are looking forward to really making this a focus of a lot of our staff development this year and helping to support our teachers in various areas as we identify places that we can continue to strengthen ourselves as we strengthen than our educators. And so at this time, I'd like to let Teacher Form say a few words. Thank you. Um, when I look at this description and I see the profile of the Berkeley County educator, I recall numerous professional development in Berkeley County from the mentoring, um, becoming an evaluator, a teacher evaluator, um, other teacher leader opportunities and as we began each one of those professional developments we outlined the attributes that we wanted to see or we saw in educators so when I look at this that's exactly what we did in our professional developments every single time because it helped us in in education we use anchor charts and this gave us that anchor chart from which to work so if each of us here think back to a teacher who really influenced you, think to that teacher. When you look at that list, do you see characteristics that that teacher had? Do you remember that teacher? I do, I remember Coach Sullivan and I see his characteristics up there and Miss Lamb and there are numerous ones that influenced me. So on behalf of Teacher Forum, we are pleased and excited to have this anchor chart or this model to help reflect and to help maintain accountability. Am I doing my very best for the students in Berkeley County? Having this model will also help recruit and retain teachers because coming in they know what we expect and we are expecting that the best will only enhance the district. Finally, it's going to help teachers to demonstrate through modeling the mindset of what a profile is so they can in turn use it to help students get the mindset for what we want in the profile of the graduate. So thank you. We just wanted to share this with you all, let you know it's a living, breathing document. If you have more comments or suggestions for us, we are open to them. But our principals and our faculties are very excited about launching this this year. They'll be using this to a large extent with our new teachers as they meet with them on a regular basis to help guide them in their expertise. Do you have any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. Just just a comment, sure. if I could. Thank you. Um, language is important, and sometimes we cannot describe. Um, we, we have to use language to really define what we mean, and, and that's what you've done. Um, I would just call on my fellow board members to now talk about salaries that it would actually come close to paying these professionals <laughs> what they deserve. 
because I'm pretty sure if all of you went back to work, even you, Mr. McQuillan, that these attributes may not be in a chart anywhere. <laughs> and um, <laughs> they do all of this in addition to being responsible for other people's children. And so thank you. And I, it's nice when someone listens to me, and I appreciate it. <laughs> we try. I we just, really do. I just want to revel in it for just a minute. Can I call my daughters? <laughs> 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 no, thank you. We appreciate the idea. We, we loved being able to step with it. Well, I'll be honest with you, as a math teacher, I, I dealt more with visuals, and I love having a chart like that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number seven, superintendent's report. Ms. Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. I'd like to take just a few minutes and talk about some of the work that's been going on behind the scenes. You know, I believe in the motto that you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And I can tell you that the rank and file of the employees in Berkeley County School District have had their shirt sleeves rolled up, their hats on, their bandanas, whatever it takes, out in the heat trying to get ready for the first day of school. And as I've driven by some of our schools, they are trimmed, neat, painted, ready to go. And not only that, the folks in the front office are smiling and greeting us with uh, big smiles and welcomes as we walk into the doors. Our teachers are in our classrooms, and they've been there. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've walked in uh, several schools, and as I'd walk down the halls, there are teachers in classrooms in all of our schools getting ahead of the curve so they can make that good first impression. Uh, maintenance facilities, our custodial crews, our administrators, our folks who've been working very, very hard to get some really high-quality professional development to support that profile of the Berkeley County School District educator ready to go. I saw a list, some exciting, exciting opportunities for our teachers. Uh, Wes and the bus drivers and the transportation compounds have been uh, training right and left. Uh, all about safety and all about getting our kids on the bus uh, and to school on time. Um, drivers, uh, we've been hiring drivers all summer and, and been getting some very good press on local news about the uh, hopes that we have for a wonderful start with our yellow hounds take the road uh, for the first day on the 15th and we're excited. Um, again, just, you know, it takes a team and, you know, this is a team that has really, really worked very, very hard to make that great first impression. And so I wanted to commend each and every person who's played a role in that. Also, I'd like to just say a word about the electronic agenda that we're experiencing tonight, almost full force. Uh, we're working on it a little bit stage by stage, but there are some folks I'd like to commend. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend Penny and Kim because they're on the front line making what you see on the, on the screen come up there and, and be correct. And so I'd like to commend them for their extra effort uh, in uh, taking on a new task. And obviously, Leslie, I think she disappeared, but Leslie, who who's been one of our uh, key trainers, and Diane for uh, taking the ball and running with making this happen. So uh, a lot of folks put a lot of hard work into it, and I think it does increase the transparency of the, the work of the board, and we'll get better and better as we fine tune it. But I wanted to take an, an opportunity to mention that. If you've forgotten, school does start Monday on the 15th for our students, and uh, when the board gets ready to go into executive session, we're going to ask them if they would come out front and let us make a photo op welcoming our students back to school for school year 2016-17 from the school board of Berkeley County. And that's it. All good news tonight. All good news. We've had a lot of good news. Okay. Moving on to agenda item eight, which is executive session. This executive session will be for discussion of pending employment matters to include appointment of some administrators. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right, so we have the motion to go into executive session again to discuss pending employment matters to include appointment of administrators. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Then all those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then we are in executive session. Thank you.
All right, do I have a motion to return from executive session? So moved. I was there. Second. I would have a motion to return from executive session. It has been seconded. Any discussion? Please, all, right. all those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, action coming from the executive session. I'll turn it over to our superintendent. Thank you very much. We've been very busy interviewing for some folks for some uh, professional advancement opportunities, and tonight we're going to recognize those who are most recently hired. I'd like to start with Vicki Hickman. Vicki is to be named as the new coordinator of visual arts upon my recommendation with a contract to take effect August 10th, 2016. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we name Vicki Hickman as a new coordinator of visual arts with a date to take effect of August 10th, 2016. I'll second. I'll All right, we have a motion to accept the recommendation of the administration that Vicki Hickman be named the new coordinator of visual arts with a contract to take effect August the 10th, 2016. It's been seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> Then all those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Congratulations. Ms. Hickman. Thank you so much. Next recommendation, it is the recommendation of the superintendent that Mary Studemeyer be named as the new secondary reading coordinator with a contract to take effect August 15th, 2016. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board accept the recommendation that Mary Studemeyer be named as the new secondary reading coordinator with a contract to take effect August 15th, 2016. Second. I we have a motion to accept the um, recommendation that Mary Studemeyer be named the new secondary reading coordinator with a contract to take effect August the 15th, 2016. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All right, all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Congratulations. And I neglected to do this before. Vicki, I believe you have some family with you. If we could ask your family to stand as well. This is my son. Okay, thank you. Yes, and Mary, you have some family with you as well, I believe. <laughs> Next one, it is the recommend. Oh, did you, did you vote? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so busy going through my stack of papers here, I missed it. Okay. <laughs> Um, it is the recommendation of the superintendent that Diane White be named as the new executive director of elementary programs with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Do I have a motion? You do. I move that the board accept the recommendation that Diane White be named the new executive director of elementary programs with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Second. So we have a motion. And it's been seconded to accept the recommendation that Diane White be named the new Executive Director of Elementary Programs with a contract to take effect August the 10th, 2016. Any discussion? All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Ms. <clears throat> White. Next, it is the recommendation of the superintendent that Sandra Broussard be named as the new Director of Assessment, Accountability, and School Improvement with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that the board accept the recommendation of the superintendent that Sandra Broussard be named the new Director of Assessment, Accountability, and School Improvement with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. I second. Then we have, a, we have a motion that we accept the recommendation of the superintendent that Sandra Broussard be named the new Director of Assessment, Accountability, and School Improvement with a contract to take effect August the 10th, 2016. Any discussion? 
All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Ms. Broussard. Next recommendation is Heidi Gary to be named as the new Career and Technical Education Coordinator with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Do I have a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the recommendation that Heidi Gary be named the new Career and Technical Educator Coordinator with contract to effect August 10, 2016. Second. All right, we have a motion that Heidi Gary be named the new Career and Technical Education Coordinator with a contract to take effect August the 10th, 2016. Any discussion? All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Next, we have the recommendation that Jay Burnsworth be named as the new assistant principal of Cane Bay Middle with the contract to take effect August 10, 2016. I have a motion. Chairman, we do have a motion. Chairman, I move that uh, the board accept the recommendation that Jay Burnsworth be named the new assistant principal of Cane Bay Middle School with the contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Second. Second. Oh, not me. Just <laughs> Oh, I'll take it then. <laughs> I, we have a motion to to accept the board recommendation that Jay Burnsworth be named the new assistant principal of Cane Bay Middle with a contract date to take effect August the 10th, 2016. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mr. Burns work. And I believe you have a uh, family with you this evening. Would you like to introduce her? Next recommendation, it is the recommendation of the superintendent that Lori Ann Griffin be named as the new assistant principal of Daniel Island School with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, you do have a motion that the board accept the recommendation of the superintendent that Lori Ann Griffin be named the new assistant principal of Daniel Island School with a contract to take effect August 10, 2016. Second. We have a motion to, uh, for the board to accept the recommendation that Lori Ann Griffin be named the new assistant principal of Daniel Island School with a contract to take effect August 10th, 2016. Is there any discussion? All of those in favor of this motion then respond, uh, respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Ms. Griffin. And I believe you have some family with you this evening. And the final recommendation that I have for this evening is that uh, Kenneth Blackstock be appointed as the Director of Communications for Berkeley County School District, effective September 12, 2016. I move that the board accept the recommendation that Kenneth Blackstock be appointed the Director of Communications. Stone, Stone, Stone. Blackstone, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get it right. It's my fault. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I take the blame. Mm -hmm. Blackstone, uh, Director of Communications. Do I have a second? I'll second. We have the motion, and it's been seconded, that Kenneth Blackstone be appointed the Director of Communications. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Do we have a date of uh, approximation? September 12, 2016. September 12. Just remind everybody else, their date sept or August 10th is tomorrow. They start. Except <laughs> 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 Is there any discussion on the 
recommendation of Kenneth Blackstone. Then all those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <laughs> okay. We have that. Mr. Blackstone's not with us this evening. He is currently working in California. He has previously worked in uh, Richland, too, on two separate occasions, and also for several years at, with Prince William County Schools in Virginia uh, for a number of years as a communications specialist there. So we look forward to having him join us September the 12th. That's why his contract didn't start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that um, is the end of the items coming out of the executive session that we've just had for employment matters. Now I entertain a motion to go into executive session where we will hear student attendance appeals, total 21, legal matters which have potential litigation involved. Uh, is there a motion? for us to go into executive session to consider these. Mr. Chair, I move that we move into executive session to hear 21 student attendance appeals and to discuss legal matters, potential litigation. Second. Okay. Mr. We have the Barnes motion gets it. To go into executive session again for student appeals and for legal matters, uh, potential litigation. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Then all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then we are again in executive session.